2022 has been a hell of a year for movies. We've seen big franchises thrive and soar to new heights, new experimental movies pushing boundaries, a wide array of creepy inventive horror movies, and oh, so much more. We got a new Batman. Robert Pattinson reapplied his gothic mascara and stepped into the role of the caped crusader. It's a long, slow movie, but after all, Batman is over 90 years old now, so give him a break. The King might be dead, but Austin Butler and Baz Luhrmann brought him back to life in Elvis. Speaking of kings, the Woman King showed how badass some women can really be. And speaking of badass women, the Predator returned once again, and once again, we showed him not to mess with humanity. You'd think at some point they'd call it quits, but no, they keep coming for us. Cheating with all their gadgets and tech as well. How dare they. We saw multiple multiverses this year, from alternate takes on famous characters, animated worlds to spooky, time-collapsing environments, and hot dog fingers. Doctor Strange and Everything Everywhere All at Once proved that anything is possible, whether you're a big budget movie or a small budget movie, so long as you have a weird imagination, oh, and plenty of money regardless of the size of the budget. The Jackass crew returned for one more album and a small lawsuit too. There isn't anything these guys and gals won't do except maybe grow up a little. The Jurassic World franchise finally came to a grand conclusion. I say grand, but it kind of came and went. It was less a roar of a T-Rex and more of a destructive mess of a meteor impact. Why did this franchise keep going? I guess it just found a way. Johnny Depp and Amber Heard traded movies for TV courtrooms. Army Hammer took a bite out of their book and got himself cancelled. Batgirl also got cancelled. Kevin Spacey may be innocent, but he probably isn't. But let's not talk about that one. And Alec Baldwin killed someone. Let's definitely not talk about that one. Movies are rife with controversy as per usual. But today I'm ignoring those controversies and instead celebrating the very best movies, the cast, the crew behind them who helped bring them to life because this is the third annual Grant Burton Film Awards. Hello, I'm Johnny Knoxville. Welcome to Jackass. Three, two, one.
I'm vengeance. Now, let's start with a biggish one. Some movies look like moving pieces of art. They're pretty, they're colourful or not so colourful. They're stylish or captivating or both. Cinematography is what gets these results. It can make a junkyard look pretty, a sunrise shine like no other. Or it can make it impossible to watch some episodes of House of the Dragon. Yeah, that's a TV show, not a movie, but it proves that even the best cinematographers can have bad days. We like a good laugh. They say sometimes that laughter is the best medicine. As a two-time cancer survivor, that's simply not true. The comedy is a good thing. This year we had gross stunts, actors playing themselves, Gen Z murder, and animated characters mixing with live action. There was a wide array of comedy movies this year, and these were the best ones. Some movies defy simple classification. They don't easily fit into drama or comedy or horror. So this category 
is for those movies. Those stubborn, inventive, genre-bending movies that make my job so much harder, even if they're good movies. Production encompasses a wide array of aspects including makeup, prosthetics, costumes, lighting, sets, props, and more. To a certain extent, this category celebrates those people who make celebrities look like gods rather than average Joes like me or you. That's a big achievement for some of them too. It also celebrates the movies that really sell us on their world and characters, bringing them to life like few of us manage. Sound is important, unless it's a silent movie. Sound can be the bang of a gunshot, the drop of a dime, the thrum of a spaceship. It can be anything you want, really. Sound should appear when needed, it should be balanced, but it should be audible too. But the lack of sound is also worth celebrating, because in some movies, these moments make the movie better, or scarier, or tenser. Sound also requires timing. Poor timing can make sound a bit more annoying.
Visual effects are made by technical geniuses. They make the impossible possible, just like Tom Cruise. This award is for the teams that did just as good, if not better, than Tom Cruise. It all starts with an idea, that is then turned into a script, without the script, nothing would happen. Writing is really important, and good writing, no so easy do. Editing can make or break a movie. You can change the order of events, alter colours and angles, increase the pace or tweak the mood. All with the click of a few buttons. It's cool! You can make someone appear bigger and stronger than they actually are too. But grey editing is hard to come by, as you can no doubt tell by watching this video. So, these movies were the best examples of grey editing this year. The lead performance is a super important one. It's the performance we the audience have to root for. We have to follow their journey, even if they're not a hero as Dwayne Johnson repeatedly stated in Black Adam. The category here celebrates the very best lead performances in movies. Everyone is a contender, except Amber Heard because her performance in court didn't win over the juries, let alone us. And it was on TV. The director is the person who brings the movie to life, injects it with style and tells everyone else what to do. They're the boss, so long as their boss keeps giving them the money and permission to do so. And this is the award for the best ones this year.
This is the big one, the final award of the show, the award for best film. But more importantly, it means this video is almost over and you don't have to listen to any more of my bad jokes. Or do you?